we can start, yes. Okay, uh, today we will continue our uh, lecture about lending protocols. What I would also ask you to do, uh, please, uh, if you have a chance to look at our YouTube channel, like the video, uh, DeFi course, this will really help us to promote uh, the DeFi uh, across YouTube. And I, I myself will be much, uh, I, I will appreciate it very much if you will do it. Thank you. So today we will look at three protocols, Aave, Compound, and uh, the very new one, the, uh, the, uh, the protocol which works with uh, NFTs as, as a collateral by Blend. So uh, let's start with Aave, and uh, we will actually talk about the third version of Aave, because the second one uh, is uh, very similar to the, uh, our definer protocol. It's built on the same principles. So what's new uh, we have on uh, the third version of Aave? So uh, first we have so-called portal. Uh, this means that uh, you now not uh, can only work on uh, one blockchain, but you can uh, actually move assets from one blockchain to another. Uh, for example, if you have uh, some deposit uh, supplied uh, on Ethereum, you can easily move it to uh, Aval uh, to Avalanche, maybe maybe to um, Arbitrum, maybe to Optimism, maybe back. So this is this is the portal. So it adds uh, this multi-chain dimension to the lending protocol. But still, it's not possible to have deposit on one chain and have a loan on another. So it, it doesn't work like this. Uh, next uh, novel, uh, novel thing uh, in uh, third hour protocol is so-called E-mood. What is it? It's so-called high efficiency mood. So actually, that's efficiency mood. It allows uh, for certain categories of assets to have higher uh, uh, collateralization ratio. And I will explain you an example how it might work. Isolation mode, uh, it is more uh, of a so sec security measure when uh, uh, you have new asset on your uh, uh, protocol. You might want it not uh, to use for for uh, any uh, assets to borrow. You can use it as a collateral, uh, and uh, if you choose to take uh, the loan with this collateral, you can choose only this uh, asset, not anything else that you have in your portfolio and you supply to 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 the protocol. And then, if you more uh, things, it's multiple rewards uh, and uh, and uh, advanced risk management features. So uh, let's start from uh, the portal. Actually, uh, this is it. Uh, you have uh, a few uh, Avia instances, forks on different uh, blockchains uh, on uh, uh, Ethereum, on uh, uh, Polygon, Avalanche, something else. And actually uh, having this portal, you can move uh, assets across the bridges. So it means that Avia is working together with the bridges. And uh, what you can do, you can uh, use these bridges under the hood and send so-called A tokens. We've been talking about that. Avia protocol has uh, special uh, interest bearing tokens, which uh, the protocol sends you as soon as you send assets, uh, supply asset to, 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 to the protocol. And exactly these A tokens, you are moving from one chain to another. So uh, for example, you, you have one Ethereum, you have one A token, then actually what you do, you actually send it uh, uh, to from Ethereum to Arbitrum. And this A token is moved from, uh, it actually minted on other uh, chain and after a certain batch of transfers uh, accrued, the underlying asset, meaning that the real Ethereum is sent from Ethereum, for example, to, to the Arbitrum network. So this is how, how it works. So first you move A tokens, it happens immediately, and Aave can mint the, sto the tokens themselves. So there's not a problem to burn it on one chain 
and mint it on another, but actually underlying asset, which uh, Avi cannot mint, uh, they move it afterwards. So this is like settlement happens after the actual move of, of the assets. And as you see it on, uh, on, your, uh, on, your, on your balance. So Imut, uh, let's uh, again have an example. Uh, here we will talk about, uh, let's say uh, a loan when you have a collateral of ST. If we will talk about this type of Ethereum later, that's so-called liquid staking tokens. LSD, liquid staking derivatives tokens. And uh, if you would uh, use it uh, in a sample, in a simple mode, as usual one, uh, then you have culturization factor or ratio uh, 70%, meaning that for 100 US dollars worth of ST, if you can borrow 70 dollars uh, of USDT, for example, the stable coin. So this is when you uh, work with uh, with the assets which are not, uh, let's say, connected uh, in the price. So they're not, their prices are not moving in one direction. But when uh, you uh, want to use this efficiency mood and actually you have a collateral of ST if and you want to borrow Ethereum, then you might switch on so-called efficiency, efficiency mood. And you can have 95 cent, uh, dollars for 100 dollars of ST if collateral. So uh, again, you put uh, 100 dollars uh, ST if uh, worth uh, of collateral supplied to the protocol, and then take 95 worth dollars of Ethereum, meaning that uh, actually it's you you have more efficiency. Why you do that? Because uh, you can again take your Ethereum, then uh, actually uh, exchange it for STEF and take another loan and do it a few in a few loops. So when you do these loops, what you have as a result, you get so-called leverage uh, LSD liquid staking derivatives. So uh, and you can increase your profitability from let's say four or five percent. APR to maybe 10, maybe 15, depending on uh, uh, actually uh, uh, on, on the number of loops, loops and the risk you want to take because it, it actually it, it's a bad idea to take exactly 95. You should take maybe 90, maybe 91, not more because uh, actually you have this some sort of fluctuations of ST if to if and if not favorable for you, actually, you may go into liquidation. So this is this is how efficiency mood is working. And I myself is actually uh, use it exactly in, in this uh, efficiency mood, but I uh, have a collateral of wrapped ST if and have an if loan. So th this is actually, a lot of people use it. So that's the explanation uh, how it works. Uh, the point is that uh, in your address, you should have only uh, assets uh, which are close in their price move. So you cannot have something else. So as soon as you have something else, uh, efficiency mood will not will not work. So therefore, you should uh, carefully look at this e mood categories, uh, what you can have as a borrow asset, what you can have as a supply asset and then use it. So isolation mode. Isolation mode, uh, again, uh, if uh, we, for example, supplied a collateral of new asset uh, token, the second token, token number two, it's isolated uh, and ha it has a certain uh, maximum debt ceiling, maximum for all borrowings, not only yours. Then having a collateral, this second token, you can only uh, borrow a specific assets like stable coins for the amount no more than 10 millions. So actually this is for the sake of the risk management. We have token uh, with the, we think not stable price, that's the new one. So we want to somehow limit our risks connected to this token. Uh, that's, that's the explanation, uh, exactly what I said. 
So if you have a certain token installation mood, you can take a loan for, for maybe only uh, stable coins with the limited amount. That's that's it. Multiple rewards. Uh, what we are talking about for the second version of Avia and for the Defina, we know that we only have uh, rewards, additional rewards to the rewards in, to the interest rate in, in the token itself. That's the governance token, or in the case of Avia second version, it was, it was staked Avia tokens. So, and only one token. But what if you uh, work with a certain project and the project says, uh, we are ready to provide uh, rewards in our own token, and you yourself may provide additional rewards in, in your governance token. So you have to two tokens as rewards. What to do? And Avi on the third version gives us answer. Yes, you can you can have uh, as, as 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 much as you want uh, rewards token for a specific asset. So that's a great great thing. But honestly, uh, I didn't uh, see any uh, assets which has uh, more than one uh, additional reward token, two rewards, three three reward tokens. I didn't see it. If if you find it please share, but at least such possibility today now exists in the third version. And uh, advanced risk management functions. Uh, in the second Avia uh, version, you couldn't have supply and lending limits. Uh, uh, now you, you have it, so you might limit uh, certain assets supply to let's say 10 million, 20 million, 100 million, 1 billion US dollars. Then uh, granular borrowing power control, meaning that, uh, well, if uh, at certain point other governance is changing, actually, uh, culturization ratio, for example, it was 75%, then governance decides that it will now be 65, so 10% less. And if you had a position with a culturization ratio of 70%, so it means that it's higher than it was before, uh, but it's lower than the new one. Uh, in the second version of Avi, you would fall into liquidation. But in the third version, it will not be so, and existing positions will not be liquidated, only new one. So this uh, new requirement is only uh, works for uh, the, the new supply and 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 uh, and the borrowing positions, not the, not the old not the old one. So that's very good in terms of uh, clients who might not expect but to be liquidated as, as a result of decrease in culturization ratio. And repay the loan with A tokens. Uh, uh, we talked about what it is. So if you do not have uh, a token, uh, the real one, if you have an Avia token, a version of this token, interest bearing token, you can actually pay the loan with these eight tokens. What else? Additional functions that so called risk admins. It means that today, uh, actually, you can have specific risk functions and give these functions for specific assets to specific entities. So, so called automated agents. In Avia, uh, there are a few uh, providers of risk uh, analysis like Gauntlet, Gauntlet uh, and you may agree on via the governance that this Gauntlet company will manage risk management. They have their keys and they do it without Avia itself. So they manage it on their own. And uh, if you if you other things, uh, the last one, variable liquidation close factor. We know that liquidation in the previous version could be only for the half of the amount of the collateral. Now it's possible for almost 95% of the collateral. So quite uh, a lot uh, additional features. Uh, flash loans uh, that existed in the second version, it's now has, uh, in we have it in the third one. So the flash loans, again, it only, possible on blockchain. And what it means is that you might not have a collateral, but you can have, take a loan for whatever amount you want, 
whatever amount there is in the pool. And uh, it, but you have you, you you will do something with this loan, but you have to return it in one transaction in one block. And as soon as you do it, that's okay. So uh, that's the flash the flash loan. You pay uh, a fee for this, but uh, for this example, you can actually exchange the collateral without repaying the repaying repaying the loan actually using the flash loan. Uh, protocol governance, uh, you have to stake your AVIA, and if you staked it, you have additional, uh, actually, uh, emissions uh, per day, additional rewards in AVIA, but your AVIA, and, and now you can take part in, in decisions taken by, uh, by the protocol, has some losses, which are not covered by, by liquidations, then actually this safety module, at the time I've taken the screenshot, they had almost 40, 400 million US dollars in the safety module. Uh, the money will be taken, subtracted from this safety module to cover the losses of the protocol. So, and then you will lose part of your uh, stake of your tokens too. Uh, this is how governance works. Actually, uh, we have uh, certain uh proposals then we have certain uh we have the voting the governance contract voting if voting is okay then we have actually uh amendments and uh, upgrades of the protocol then certain time lock and 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 that's it so this is how how it works that's the performance of the governance token avi uh, it was almost 600 US dollars uh, last uh, even one and a half year ago, maybe two years ago. Now it's around $80. You see that the fluctuations, that the volatility of the token is, is, is quite significant. Compound protocol. That's uh, actually uh, the protocol which competitor to other protocol. And uh, we will also talk about the third version of the protocol, which uh, works in this way. So uh, here you can provide the collateral, Ethereum, wrapped, with, wrapped Bitcoin, compound token, that's the government's token of, of the protocol, Uniswap, Chainlink, uh, only five tokens collateral as a collateral asset. And what you can do with this, with this uh, collateral, you can only take US, USDC loan. And you can see here that you earn nothing on your collateral. It has zero interest rate, but you have to pay a borrow APR rate for your USDC loan. And at the time of the screenshot, it was higher than 3% interest rate. But as additional uh, reward, you have a distribution of the compound token itself to an point. 37%. So as you can see, uh, the actual rate will be a little bit higher than 1%. You can also be a provider of liquidity. If you have USDC, you can provide this liquidity to this uh, pool and earn 1.8% interest rate. So this is this is how, how it works. Uh, that's the example for quite quite. Uh, easy uh, and uh, utilization ratio is 56 percent and you see this uh, the curve which we already mentioned in the previous lecture it goes higher and higher with the rise of utilization ratio that's this uh, compound we free but for uh, designed special specifically for uh, liquid, liquid, liquid liquid staking derivatives you can actually put as a collateral Coinbase wrapped staked Ethereum or LS Ethereum, LIDA staked Ethereum, and take the simple Ethereum uh, as, uh, as, as a loan. So here we also have uh, fee distribution. Uh, distrib distrib distribution for those who provide Ethereum as, a, as uh, into, the, into the pool. So again, if you have if you earn 2.4% as a provider liquidity in Ethereum plus 1.8, you have three, 
4.2 percent actual interest rate but and you see that the interest rates are quite high why because of this additional interest rate which are locked into this uh lidar staked ethereum and coinbase wrapped staked ethereum so these tokens and themselves they are like uh bringing additional interest which might be today four to five percent uh annual annual rate so uh comp uh, governance token uh performance is even lower than avia it was not 600 but it's 800 at some point now it's 50 dollars per, per token so uh our next protocol uh we already talked about this protocol in uh our stable coins lecture now it's uh, the frax land the so-called market which built in in the frax finance ecosystem here you have these uh, pairs. Actually, uh, what you can do, you can uh, put uh, as a collateral uh, assets in, in the left corner, in the left column, and you can borrow only Frax stable coin. So you can see that you can put the CRV curve, governance token, GOM, uh, FXS, uh, that's the Frax shares, that's the governance token of the Frax ecosystem. Then this SFRX if that's actually uh, liquid stake derivatives FPI, wrap BTC, and some, some other tokens. Utilization ratio, you can see total borrow, available liquidity, and the interest rates. Actually, you can land at API, which is here. You can borrow an API, which is also on this uh, picture. So uh, how it works, uh, very simple. Uh, we have Frax land pair. We have the lender who put uh, asset into the into this pair, ERC20 token, for example, wrap BTC, and they get F tokens, A token for Avi, F token for uh, Frax. That's the same, uh, actually, uh, model, this, the, uh, the, the same mechanism. And you actually borrow what you borrow you uh, again put the collateral and put uh, uh, put and, and and take uh, asset as 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 a lender. You have interest rate uh, calculations. You have uh, Fraxland uh, deployer and the Oracle. Of course, it cannot work without Oracle. You need to have this data about relationship of Ethereum to your Frax stablecoin every block because otherwise it's not possible to understand if you have to be liquidated or not. So uh, Frax uh, lending markets, uh, you can only uh, actually here as, as uh, with the compound, the third version, someone has to provide Frax as, as asset tokens, as a liquidity. Uh, borrowers provide collateral in the form of wrapped BTC or some other token niche uh, pair relies on certain oracle to determine the, uh, the price of the assets. But why I'm talking about the frags? Because they have quite interesting models of interest rates uh, calculation, which is different from what I've seen before. Uh, all protocols, uh, the compound, define, uh, Avi does not depend on the version, the third version, the, send, the second version. They all have these two actually lines one flat, this, the second one is steep. Uh, but here we, uh, in the FRAX, we have the new model, which so-called time-weighted uh, variable interest rate. How it works? It works that we have the minimum rate, we have maximum rate, we have target utilization range. And if our rate goes out this target utilization range, then for a certain each certain period of time, uh, we have interest rate half-life. So it means that the rate increases or decreases every, every block uh, for uh, this calculation is for 12 hours. So it means that that's the speed with which rate will be halved uh, for, for, for the 12 hours. And how it works here we see, uh, for if we have the target utilization range 75 to 85 percent 
then uh, rate one to rate no actually is 100%. There is no change. But when uh, we go out of this range and the utilization ratio is grow to 90%, for example, we see this rapid increase in the rate uh, at the change every, every four hours. And on the contrary, when the, the utilization ratio is falling, then again, the rate is falling too. So uh, you only have to understand that we have utilization range uh, and this utilization rate uh, is fixed. It doesn't change. And as soon it go, it, as it goes out of the utilization range, range we see that it, it increases or decreases to the minimum and the maximum actually uh, set uh, para parameter in, in Actually, innovation is so-called variable V2 interest rate. Uh, that's the combination of the concept of linear interest rate and time-weighted variable interest rate. How it works, uh, it's easier to explain you on, on the picture. We see the same two lines, one the flat one, the second one is a steep one. That's exactly the same as it works for um, actually uh, Avia or compound. But we add here this time-weighted average uh, model, which again says us that there is no change in the minimum rate uh, when we are in the certain utilization ratio. Uh, actually, uh, when, when we are in a certain utilization ratio, sorry, sorry, I moved a little bit range like here but as soon as as soon as we move out of this range actually the whole uh, lines will start moving higher or lower so it means that uh, these two lines starting moving higher by the y axis or lower so if uh, we get out of range uh, and the utilization ratio is falling then we move lower and the whole these two lines getting getting lower when on the contrary we have the utilization ratio is growing then it, it gets higher the whole actually these two lines this graph if it, this curve with two lines it's, it's it's getting higher and higher so, so this is very interesting uh innovations from the frax uh, from the frax land even more complicated than uh, than i've seen in uh, other protocols. And now uh, the most interesting actually lending protocol, which works with uh, NFTs as a collateral. So it's a blend. Uh, blend was introduced by the Blur. The Blur, you know, that's the uh, one of the uh, major marketplaces uh, like OpenSea trading with NFTs. And they added this, the blend protocol. What are the key features of the blend uh, protocol. So first of all, there's no oracles. It means that uh, if we take any other uh, lending protocol like Avia, Compound, Frax, we all all these protocols need oracles. Uh, and we understand why they don't have oracles because uh, if we specifically know the price of Ethereum, the price the price of Bitcoin, the price of the stable coin we definitely have a problem with the price oracle for a certain NFT. Uh, I don't think that anyone can say us how much does it cost. So therefore, Blend avoids this oracle dependencies of, of the uh, core protocol. Actually, the interest rates loan to value ratios determined by the terms of the lender of the and, and the borrower. The second, feature is that there's no expiries. So it means that uh, actually the same happens on other protocols. It's not, there's no expiring expiries. And here it also, if you take an, a loan with your NFT as a collateral, then it might exist forever. Of course, we have liquidations here and it's peer to peer. It means that if uh, you uh, work with liquidity pools, on Avia, Compound, Define, and Frax. Here, it's, it's not like that. 
here it's like a marketplace where someone is proposing you specifically to you with your uh, uh, actually nft as a collateral and peer to peer uh now let's let's uh, explain how, how actually uh, this protocol is functions uh again by default loans is indefinite uh a borrower can so the borrower can repay it at any time and if a borrower wants to change the amount they have borrowed uh, and or get a better interest rate they can automatically take a new loan against the collateral and use the new principle to repay the old loan the old loan what does it mean imagine we have the crypto punk as a collateral and we've taken a loan for i don't know our crypto punk worth is half of a million us dollars we take a loan for 100 uh, thousand us dollars and i don't know 15 percent interest rate and we use this money uh but at certain period of time we see that we have another uh actually uh lender coming to us and say who says that i'm ready to provide you not 100 but 200 us dollars and the rate will be 10 percent so it's lower the rate is lower the amount is higher and we as the borrowers can actually accept this new loan repay the old one and the old borrower will go with with the fully repaid loan and his 15 or her 15 percent interest rate paid so this is how it works so here is on the graph we have the old old rate uh 10 percent in my case it was 15 then the new one five percent and we can repay the loan if we have this other offer from someone peer-to-peer -peer offer from someone who offers us this new loan if we don't have it so we it's not possible to repay the old the old loan uh talking about the lender so uh, again let's imagine we have the same situation uh but now i'm not the borrower and the owner of this nft called collateral nft but i am the lender i'm that guy who provided the loan of for 100,000 US dollars with the with the NFT collateral uh, and I want to get out of this loan so I I actually don't want to to stay with this loan anymore so what I can do I can actually trigger a so-called refinancing auction and I'm trying to refinance uh, my loan and during this refinancing, what happens is that it works as a Dutch auction. We already mentioned this Dutch auction when we were talking about stable coins and the MakerDAO protocol. Uh, what it means is that uh, from for a certain period of time, uh, interest rate is gradually growing, and uh, any other lender can actually come and say, "Okay, I'm ready to refinance this loan." not with the 15%, but let's say with the 30% or 20% or even higher. But if you say, what, uh, what happens if we will not find those who want to refinance the loan? In this case, in this case, as soon as the interest rate went to the maximum possible limit, as far as I understand, it's 1,000%. Uh, uh, it means that if if this Dutch auction expired, no one, we did not have any offers, then we as as a lender actually may uh, liquidate uh, uh, this this loan. So we uh, take the collateral uh, for ourselves. So this like refinancing is refinancing is working. Adjust to high interest rate. We had ten percent or fifteen. Then something someone else came and agreed to take the loan under uh, 15 percent it's a new rate liquidation so this that was what i was talking about uh as soon as we uh understand that our uh during our dutch auction we were not able to find the willing lender 
of course, this happens when the collateral has dropped, the price of collateral has dropped. No one wants to actually land with this uh, collateral because they evaluate it as, as, as at a lower price. Um, and our auction hits the maximum defined interest rate, 1,000%, no lenders stepping in. And then we treat this position as insolvent and you as a lender may send a transaction and actually possess the collateral. So you receive this NFT for yourself. It will be yours. It means that the guy who taken the loan will not repair you the loan. You will not see the money, but you get the collateral. You'll get the NFT. Uh, so this is how liquidation happens. Uh, the price Dutch auction start goes from zero to 100, 1,000%. And then no new uh, lenders and we liquidate you as a lender liquidate this loan. Today, uh, Blend is uh, working with, the maybe now it's more, but at the time, maybe it's just a few months old. So it, it started maybe in April, maybe late, late March. They at that time had three collections, the Punks, Azuki, and Milady. This each of, uh, uh, I think that the Punks has about 10,000 NFTs, Azuki also, Milady maybe. So it's 30,000 NFTs overall, and 30,000 loans can be uh, actually taken as uh, with this uh, NFTs as a collateral. So that's it for today. Uh, if you have questions, please ask. That's the sources. Okay, I look at the chat. Uh, regarding flash loan, how can you use the loan so quickly to pay it back in one transaction? So you actually, you can do it, believe me. A lot of hacks you read about happens with the flash loan. And what happens, is that actually, uh, if you are externally owned account, you cannot send uh, two transactions in one and put it in one block. But if you are a smart contract, you can do it. And, and these hackers, what they do, they, for example, take, the, take a loan for maybe 100 million US dollars. It, it all happens in one transaction. Then, they manipulate some price oracle. So they go and buy some token and uh, let's say uh, and the price of this token gets extremely high. Uh, as soon as it gets very high, they go to the lending protocol we are talking about today. And uh, they use this token as a collateral and take, for example, stable coin as a loan. And then they actually uh, repay the loan uh, which they take in this flash loan the price of this uh, 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 token is falling and we have a liquidation situation but the price of the token let's say increased tenfold and it fallen tenfold and uh, actually the laying protocol is suffered so this is what usually happens you can do it believe me this is how it works Tak, the second, uh, so the second uh, question, why do the prices of governance tokens in a pound fluctuate so much? So it's not only uh, Avi and Compound. Uh, you know that uh, 2020, you know this DeFi summer 2020, then NFT 2021. And in that period, uh, we saw this uh, DeFi hype, all tokens connected to DeFi, to DeFi actually increased uh, maybe 100 fold, uh, 100 times. Uh, but after we saw this uh, uh, last May situation of uh, the Terra Luna collapse and uh, actually crypto winter, the tokens, uh, even, even Bitcoin was 16,000 when it was initially almost 60. And, and the same situation with the um, Ethereum, it was four, maybe and a half thousand. At a certain point, it was nine nine hundred US dollars. Uh, how to use flash loan in some legal way? That what what that was what I did actually. Uh, when uh, 
uh, I used uh, some the protocol which allowed me to build this leveraged uh, liquid staking derivative position. And what I so I had let's say one one Ethereum, and I wanted to multiply it a few times. So with this one Ethereum, not with this one, but actually I I, I went to the balancer pool, taking a flash loan uh, in uh, wrapped staked uh, Ethereum, then put it as a collateral, then actually uh, taking the loan, convert it into, into what wrapped staked Ethereum, uh, repay the loan, and it was all in one transaction. Uh, I, I will show you actually uh, maybe next lecture how it works. I find a few examples. So when you change the collateral or you or you are building some leverage position, you want to make a few loops. You need these flash loans because otherwise that will be much more gas. You can do the same, but it will take much more cost in terms of transactions. So uh, thank you for your questions. That's that's it for today. Please don't forget to like our videos. I, I believe in you. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone.